Hey everyone, my name is Dan Quintana and I want to show you around Zotero, which is free software to help you organize and cite your research. So let's jump straight on in. So the first thing you want to do, assuming you don't have Zotero um, installed on your system, is to go to Zotero.org and click on the download button. And here it will allow you to download this, whether you're on Windows, Mac or Linux. And here you can easily download Zotero. And as part of the download, you also get something important, which is called Zotero Connector. Now, this is a, a really important thing that I'll walk you through how to use soon, which allows you to download citation information and PDFs if they're available within your Zotero library. And there are Zotero connectors available for four different browsers, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. And this is included as part of the download. So click on download, install it, and you will also have the installation of Zotero Connector, which helps you save from your browser with a single click. Okay, now let's assume you have Zotero installed, and this is what it looks like. Of course, when you install it, it'll have a blank library, but because I use Zotero a lot, I have lots of different uh, journal articles here. So to give you an example of what it looks like, Zotero makes it very easy to um, organize all your information here. Using Zotero Connector, as part of that, it includes all the information, all the bibliographic information for journal articles or for book chapters or for books or for whatever you're doing your research on. Here's all the information here that it automatically extracts. But what's really cool is that you get a preview of what the PDF looks like. As part of Zotero Connector, if a PDF is available, it'll automatically download the bibliographic information as well as a PDF. If the PDF is not available on the website or if for some reason Connector doesn't work, which does happen from time to time, you can manually add a PDF to a particular reference here. So let's click on this. And if we double click, then we can read our article here. And the great thing about Zotero is we can do highlights or we can do underlines if we like. It's very, very handy. Okay, so going back to our library, we can see all our articles here. Here is the reference and if we wanna click on the PDF, then we can double click here and have all our information and we can make all of our notes on this as well. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, import articles into Zotero. Now let's go back to our web browser and then let's say we are writing a assignment or writing a paper on the link between digital media use and mental health and youth, which is a uh, quite a growing research field at the moment. So we have found this interesting paper here and within your browser, you will find a button here within Safari. This is what this looks like. This button will look a little bit different depending on your web browser within Chrome. You'll see a little Z and um, in different web browsers, you'll have to find where it is, but there'll automatically be something here. And here, if we hover here, it'll save, say, save to Zotero. And if we click on that, Zotero will automatically extract all the bibliographic information from a website. And if available, it'll also extract a PDF. So let's click on this. Let's click on save to Zotero. We can see it's working away here. It's saving it to my main library. And let's see if we can actually get the PDF. Sometimes it'll take a little bit of time. Let's see how we go. Okay, while we're waiting for that, let's switch across. Okay, this worked. We have our article. So here's all the bibliographic information, which is here. It got the authors. So normally if you weren't doing this, you would have to manually extract this information. And if you're doing this for one or two papers, doesn't take too long. But if you're doing this for a number of papers, this takes a long time. This automates the process. It has sensed or it has detected that it's a journal article. It's got the title. It's got the, all the authors, where it was published and all the information that you need here. 
But here we can also see a little preview of the PDF that it's extracted. Let's have a read. You'll notice here there's also some tabs above Zotero for different papers that you may have open or different PDFs you may have open. Okay, so we have for our purposes, for the paper that we're doing, some really interesting, um, really interesting results here. So we can do some highlights, either underlines or highlights for our particular paper. Let's do it a second time. Go back to our library. Let's go back to our web browser. Here's another interesting paper for us. Okay. Again, click on your Save to Zotero button, wherever it is for your particular browser. This is for Safari. Click on this. We can see here it's saving it to our library and it's also found a PDF. Let's go back to Zotero. One of the really cool things about Zotero is that if you can't access the article, Zotero will do its best to find an open access um, version of this particular article. The article that I got here was uh, a paywall article. However, the authors for this particular article have also uploaded a submitted version of their PDF and Zotero found that. So we can read this article here and this is a very nice way of getting around paywalls if you don't have access to this. This is exactly the same paper, just without the fancy journal formatting here. Really, really handy. Okay, let's do one more. Go back to Safari. We'll get this, um, this paper here. This is interesting for us. So assuming we've read it and this is uh, relevant for our work, we'll click on that. It's seeing if we can get the article. If you don't, if you can't get access and if there's no um, open access version of the article, then you can go through your library access if you have uh, access through a library and you can get that article as well and you can add that to your library. So let's go back to Zotero. Here we have the article here. Okay, so we have our three articles that we're gonna use. Now let's see how we can uh, include this within our article that we're writing. Okay, let's say we want to include some citations in this paper that we're writing, looking at the impact of digital media use on youth mental health. We have a first sentence here. I'm just using a template from Word. If you've downloaded Zotero, it'll automatically include a plugin for your word processor. So here we can see Zotero written up here. Um, and if it's not there, restarting your word processor often helps. And then here you would click on add edit citation. So we've clicked on this and we have a preference that comes up asking you which reference style that you want to use. Um, that has a few default styles in here, although there are ways clicking on manage styles finds additional styles. But for our purposes, we're going to go with APA 7th edition. We click OK. So we've chosen that. And then this little menu bar pops up. And this is where we actually include the citation that we want to include. Um, so what we can do is this actually shows you the open documents that you have. So like I said before, there are various tabs open. So if you're reading a few different PDFs, it shows it here, but if that doesn't come up, you can simply search by the paper title or by the, the by, by the names of the authors. So we want to include this particular paper here. This comes up, this one paper, once this is ready, then we just press enter and this is included. Okay. So we have our first reference here. And then we want to put a second one in here, put the cursor there, click on add citation. And then we want to use I'm going to search. There we go. We found it. We search by author. We found the paper, click enter. That's it's there. We have these two citations here. And then once we actually go to creating a bibliography, we go down to that particular section and we click add edit bibliography. There we go. Once we click on that, then we have our references there or our bibliography made. So we have our in-text citation here. 
and our bibliography down here. And then once you add some more things, if you're adding more in-text citations, you simply click on refresh and those things that are added, it'll automatically update your bibliography. So this is a much easier way than manually putting in your, your references. Let's look at another cool feature of Zotero and that is the ability to have group libraries. So if you're working within a group of people, um, be it you're working in a lab or it's part of a group university assignment, it's very easy to work on a collective group of papers and references. So the way to set this up, or one of the ways to set this up is to log in to your Zotero account. So create a Zotero account, log into that account. So we go here. I'm already logged in. If you weren't logged in, your login would go up here. Create that account, log in, go to your profile, and then go to this tab called Groups. And then I already have an existing group for my lab, but let's say we want to create a new group, and we're going to call it the name of our name of our course, name of the course that we're in. We're going to do um, private membership if you want, which is which is fine. But there are different options for membership. Choose that, and choose create group. We can save our settings here. Then let's go back to Zotero. And there's this button up the top right here, which refreshes Zotero. This is always syncing up with what you're doing between devices. A really cool feature of Zotero is if you're using Zotero on different computers or your smartphone or your tablet, then anything that you do across those devices will be synced up. You can also use Zotero within the browser as well. All those things are synced up. So we can force a sync here. And here we go. This has popped up. Our new group has popped up here. So say we are working on uh, this group assignment, looking at uh, digital media use and youth mental health, we can simply drag papers of interest into this library. And other people who are part of this group see these particular papers here. So you can have your own personal library for papers, but if you're working on a particular project with other people, you have a group there. If you want to add people, go to member settings and then you would click on send more invitations and you would use the Zotero names, Zotero usernames or the email addresses and doing that. So say you're working on a group assignment, then you can get the Zotero usernames of the people in your group, invite them and then they will get access to this group simply by pressing refresh here. You can add PDFs, you can do all your notes here as well. There's also a way to add a particular note. So you might say interesting paper and then that's all synced up. And that note comes up there. So this is a really good way for collaborating on group work. So yes, that is Zotero, which is really, really handy for organizing all your research and also for doing uh, in-text citations and creating your bibliography. I hope that was useful for you.